today. Today we're making a big step in the Ranger. Don't want to miss this. Welcome back everybody. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, comment. I haven't really decided. Keep going with the comments on dream builds from a couple videos ago or what you're building. Let's keep that going. Um, get a few more, I'll go ahead and I'll pick my top favorites, the ones I think are awesome. They're all awesome. Anybody that builds anything is awesome. I don't care what it is. Um, but I'll pick my choices and I'll give you guys a shout out. So today we're going to modify the knock sensor harness, put a connector back into it so we can install that. Then we'll drop the intake on. I already had the fuel injectors put in with new, uh, new O-rings. Um, I have the brake booster hose figured out and a PCV hose. So I'm going to move the camera, we'll get into the harness, get that modified, and then we'll reposition out to the truck, we'll get stuff put on. Alright guys, this is actually an EVAP connector off a GM vehicle. Nothing fancy but it's a two-wire connector that is actually weatherproof. It has the grommet, it's a weather pack connector, so that's what we're going to use. So, what I'll do first is cut right behind the old splice. I'm going to save these, I'll show you why, why in a second. Let me get strippers. Get those knocked off. too tight on that. There we go, that's better. You guys end up going out and buying the Harbor Freight wire strippers. You can actually turn this knob and it controls how much it bites on the wire. That time it actually ripped the wire right off. Twist it a little bit so it's able to give you some good clean wire to solder to. Again, the handy dandy Harbor Freight soldering iron. Worked so well the last time, we'll give her another shot this time, see if she still works good. Get some heat shrink. So I had heat shrink on before, because if not, then well, you're not heat shrinking it unless you cut it and put another splice in. But splice it like that. As of right now, it doesn't matter what colors go to what. Just like that. like that. Let it cool off a little bit. Slide that over. Grab a wider. One, let's do the second one here.
in soldering. I'll probably do a video showing how I solder separate from this harness. Just that way I can do a little more in depth on what I'm trying to achieve and a couple different methods I have. But for now, this will do. All right, so there's that. The reason I saved these is you can actually see there's a little bit of the colored wire on that end. And like I did in the first video, blue 11 and blue 51 are where these are gonna go at the PCM. So I got a piece of tape, I'm actually mark first. Blue 11, or B11 if we want to play bingo, we can do that too. I like bingo. So, blue 11 went to the light blue wire. So I find the light blue, comes up to this one. There's one I'll have to extend. And that way, when I take this apart after it's installed, I still know which wire goes to what. All right, we got blue 51. All right, just like that. Don't need those. All right, I'm gonna reposition the camera out to the truck and we will get this dropped on and we'll get the intake dropped on. So be right back. You won't be able to see it here before I finish this video I'll show you. I actually had to clearance the firewall with a uh, special tool called the hammer to make room for the intake to actually drop on. But before I end this video I will get a close up picture of that for you so you guys can see my handy dandy artwork on that. So I'm going to grab the intake and get her, get her tossed on here.
Nothing too special here, guys. Just tightening them down. I know there's torque spec. Somebody will probably razz me for not torquing it all the way to spec. But I've done enough of them that I, I know about where they should be. And I'm more than likely this is going to come back off at some point. May not be till after initial startup, but I have a feeling stuff's gonna come apart. Maybe we'll start another poll. Um, comments. Let's see what is the craziest thing that in person you have seen an LS in. Let's go with that. Uh, mine that I can think of off the top of my head, I have a buddy that has a Chevy Lumina uh, rear wheel drive converted with an LS1 in it. It's actually a fairly sick car. He takes it down to the drags and runs it. But what's the craziest thing you guys have seen in person? I know there's some wacky stuff on the on the interwebs, but I want to know what you guys have actually seen in person. Car shows, maybe it's something you have that you decided to build because nobody else has, or something like that. So yeah, uh, comment down in the comment section. What is the craziest thing you've seen LS swapped? So almost got this last one buttoned up. Never ending bolts. That could be why. Got that in. We'll take our freshly modified knock sensor, put the clip on it, put it up there like that. That's on. We'll plug our PCV hose in like that. And we'll hook up our brake booster. Just like that. All right, guys. Intake is on. There's the knock sensor plug, booster, PCV hose is on. This is one of the fuel lines I gotta modify. I gotta get another one for the uh, 3 8 for the supply side. Other than that, throttle buddies on so I think that's all I have for today uh, for this awesome Wednesday a lot of progress made so subscribe hit the bell uh, again comment in the box craziest thing you've seen an LS dropped in in person um, and yeah thanks for watching